Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, uh, we're going to do a comparison test today. Uh, this one is going to be Hubson versus Hubson. Uh, I've got the uh, Hubson Xeno 2 Plus and then the new uh, Hubson Mini Pro. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of talk about comparing drones, the Mini drones in particular. I don't know if this guy is ready to go up against the, uh, the DJI Mini 2, but I thought we would compare Hubson versus Hubson. Uh, this little guy actually has more features on it than the bigger one, the Xeno 2 Plus. Although I would argue that the Xeno 2 Plus at this point is more refined and quite frankly uh, a better flying drone. And in many cases, uh, might be the best answer for a lot of new drone flyers. Uh, so they both shoot in 4K 30. Uh, they've got, uh, uh, this one ostensibly has 40 minute flight time. I'm trying to remember what this guy is. I think it's about 35 minutes, something like that. I don't remember exactly. But I know from flying this Xeno 2 Plus enough that it's got a pretty good camera. It flies pretty well and does things uh, quite well. Uh, anybody that watches my channel knows that I've had a few issues with the, uh, with the Xeno Mini Pro. But uh, let's take them both up. And I'm out at Lucky Peak Reservoir. And we'll fly out over the reservoir. We'll go out a ways. We'll go towards the sun, away from the sun, etc. Look at some different territory. And uh, we can then compare the video quality of the two drones and see what you think. And, uh, you know, we can look at them and I can give you my opinion of how they fly, etc. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Let's quit messing around. Uh, let's get these birds in the air. I think, uh, you know what? We'll start with uh, we'll start with the little guy first. The uh, Hubson Xeno Mini Pro is going to be the first one in the air here. Hey, okay, we are just about ready to take off here. Uh, I've got uh, the uh, the drone started, the controller started. It says we're in Addy mode. Uh, then we've got the uh, X Hubson 2 app fired up. Let's go into the interface here, and uh, it's interesting to me that it's uh, now now it's telling me ready to fly. And we've got 10 satellites on the uh, on the app, but the controller says Addy mode, which is interesting. It's also asking for a compass calibration, so we'll do that real quick. Okay, we completed that uh, compass calibration quite easily, and we're getting the prepare to take off. It is giving me uh, ready to fly, uh, although it says Addy mode on the controller. The app is showing it's got 10 satellites. Uh, so in any case, let's go ahead and look at the uh, status list. And it's telling us the, uh, the upcoming, as we've seen in the past, the, uh, the upcoming updates that we've got to look forward to. Yeah, you know, everything says connected here. Uh, we're, looks like we're normal on uh, all the calibrations. It's noting here, so we should be good to go. It says memory card capacity 72 gigabytes, which is interesting. Maybe I didn't uh, delete from my previous flight because I've got the 128 gigabyte model. But in any case, uh, we, we've got plenty of room to go ahead and fly here. And th those of you that know, uh, the little mini will not start recording until uh, after you take off. And all of our calibrations are good here. Yeah, return to home altitude is what I was looking for. It's set at 35 meters. I'm going to uh, I'm going to move it up a little bit because if we get uh, there, it's at 94. That's plenty, more than enough. If there's a there's a couple of little peninsulas here. If we got behind them, and the drone had to return to home, I want to make sure that it could uh, get over the top of them. So that's why I've got that set so high. Uh, 12 satellites now and it says GPS on the controller as well so I think we're good to take off uh, let me uh, let's hit take off on the app here and there we go uh, man I tell you uh, this will be interesting to compare this takeoff with what we see with the Xeno 2 plus uh, this is the best uh, performance I've ever seen from a Hubson drone 
with regard to stability. So uh, let's go ahead and start recording. Switch into video mode. And let me, uh, let me I'm going to uh, go into the camera settings here. And we want to uh, make sure we're on 4K30, and we are. Click on the three dots below that. Uh, the, the, we can change the bit rate. Let's go ahead and move that up to maximum, 200. We want to give it the best chance it can. I see the drones moving over just a little bit, wandering just a little bit. Let's go back. Uh, and color is uh, by default on natural, so we'll just leave that on natural. I think on the Xeno 2 Plus that's going to say ordinary. I can't remember for sure, uh, but I, we're good to go there. So let's start recording. And we are recording. Let me turn the drone around and we'll bring it in front of the camera here. Closer in front of the camera that is. Give you a better look. Uh, you know the drone, the drone flies uh, pretty good. This is one of the uh, most uh, best flying Hubson drones, I think, yet with regard to stability. Now, like I said, I like the flight controls on the Xeno 2 Plus just fine. Let's bring this guy in a little closer. And I've got uh, 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 obstacle avoidance off. That's not turned on. And we're not going to turn it on. Uh, I've seen that cause some problems on this drone. Oh, one, one thing I want you to note, uh, let me uh, move the camera over here. We're going to drop this down and then back up and uh, you can see well I, I guess I could just drop the camera you can see my uh, kind of cobbled together tripod here I got all the way up here I've got uh, I've got a loaner car with me today my, I've got a, my other cars in for service uh, and I, I brought all my gear but I forgot to bring a tripod so I was able to cobble together uh, a couple of selfie sticks and make this work so uh, let's go ahead, quit, quit messing around, and let's do our, uh, our, our usual droney here. So uh, I dropped that camera so we could do that. Uh, so reverse and up now, reverse and up. One thing that I've seen about this controller is I tend to cross-couple a little bit. And by, by cross-coupling, I mean that I put in two different stick inputs at once. Uh, it, there's not a lot of tension on these controller gimbals. And the first thing you're going to notice, we're going we're gonna to back up a ways here. Let me pick the camera up a little bit. And I want you to see, boy, I'll tell you what, the picture sure looks good on my FPV screen here. We'll have to see how it looks off the memory card, but... Uh, it's sure looking good on FPV. Uh, and we got a good solid signal here. Everything's looking good. Uh, so this is, you guys have seen this before. This is the viewpoint that I often uh, fly from. So, uh, so we're out about, what, 424 meters or so and about 80 meters high. So that's probably just about right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go down the uh, yaw to the drone's uh, right. And, uh, and we'll go, uh, we'll go down the reservoir here a little bit. Isn't that something? That's a thing of beauty right there. They really have dropped the level of the reservoir. Uh, and that's me picking up the gimbal, just giving us a better look. So let's go ahead and go uh, uh, full stick forward in normal mode. And uh, just kind of run up the uh, reservoir here a little bit. And we're up about, uh, oh, eight and a half meters per second, which that seems to be top speed in normal mode. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, the level of the reservoir here is unbelievably low for this time of year. You, typically, it would be a little bit higher. Uh, we have a drought going on in the western United States, and, uh, you know, the farmers need the water to irrigate their crops, although we just, uh, this is early September, so, uh, you know, they'll be starting a lot, do, you know, they're probably just about done with irrigating. I'm kind of adjusting our heading here, adjusting the yaw a little bit, trying to get down to the center of the, uh, of the uh, reservoir. And boy, uh, so far so good with uh, 
uh, control. I mean, FPV is perfect. Uh, the you know we've got perfect control signal. All the both of the uh, uh, meters are got full bars, so good to go there. In fact, let's kick up a little altitude here. We'll kick it up to about uh, 100 meters or so. Yeah, there's just a little over 100 meters. And uh, we'll keep heading that direction. So we'll get out about, uh, well, I don't know. Let's, let's, uh, let's see how far out here we can get a little ways. This, we're out about a kilometer now. No point in, uh, in going too far, but it's, it, it is kind of interesting to see if you guys remember the flight that I had out at the uh, Snake River Canyon, I, uh, the, I had some problems uh, with the drone uh, losing connections. So, and it was long, it was right at about a kilometer when I lost connection out there. So we're about 1.2. We're gonna go a little further and then I'm gonna turn and show you uh, something else here. So there's 1.3. We're going to stop right there. I'm off the sticks. We're going to yaw to the drone's right again. And I'm kind of moving uh, both sticks together, trying to get a smooth turn here. And just show you one of the little, uh, yeah, I, probably, I didn't go quite far enough. So this is just one of the little offshoots of the reservoir. Yeah, and boy, look at how low the water is. And so I'm moving the drone sideways here and going out a little further so you can see it. And man, oh man, the reservoir is pretty low. I mean, there's, uh, you can see there that there are places uh, for people to, uh, to uh, uh, stop with their boats and, uh, and picnic, etc. And all of that is now high and dry. So we're going to go ahead and continue to yaw around here. And that right there, let's go over the top of that. That's another one of the picnic areas. And boy, I have to tell you, uh, <laughs> the drone is flying awesome. I have no complaints about how this drone is handling or flying right now. So I'm looking this, what we're looking at here is almost directly across from me uh, where I'm at out here on the point. And uh, there's a number of docks right here, so, but you can see they're all just high and dry. Uh, but I think they even have restrooms in this particular facility. So if you're out here in the summertime and you're out boating, you just pull up there, uh, dock your boat and have a picnic. I think you can even camp there. Let's kind of arc around as we uh, as we get closer. And give you a good look at it. This might be a good uh, good opportunity to uh, Sorry there my mouth got a little dry. Let's let's might be a good opportunity to try the zoom on this guy. So let me get centered kind of here and I'm going to drop the gimbal just a little bit and I'm going to hold the uh, function button and with the scroll wheel I'm going to zoom in. So I'm trying to do a nice slow zoom and this is just a, just a digital zoom. Now uh, and you can see on the screen recorder there it's showing you know four times It'll, it tells us how far we're zoomed and I can even see a little pixelation on the FPV screen here. So that's bound to happen with digital zoom. Uh, and in fact, I don't even think they call it lossless zoom or anything, but it is just digital zoom. So essentially it's just cropping in. But one of the issues that we had earlier with this particular drone was that what we saw on the SD card, it didn't crop straight. And so it was kind of off to the side. So we'll see what it looks like. And I just said SD card. As you guys know, this drone does not have an SD card. It, uh, it has uh, uh, a uh, uh, internal memory. I'm sorry, I stumbled over my tongue there. And let's pick up the, didn't mean to, to, uh, oh yeah. Okay. There I had just a little bit of stutter on FPV as I was bringing that around. So 
that's why you saw that. So let's see, 69% battery. We got tons of battery on this guy, and we've been recording for nine minutes, So, and we had already taken off, so we're probably a good 10 minutes into the flight, and we still have 68% battery. So we're going to go uh, straight forward here, and, uh, and I can show you... Uh, we're not going to get too close to the dam uh, because that is, uh, of course, uh, what you would call critical infrastructure. So that's off limits. But but we will uh, go over here. I can show you uh, where the uh, uh, the main boat launch is. And people that have followed my channel have seen it before, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of doing this just so that we can compare the two drones. When we fly the... Uh, the uh, Xeno 2 Plus will kind of fly a similar pattern here and uh, at the end of the video I'll throw uh, the video up side by side so that you guys can see it. But now we're kind of getting a look at the boat launch there and look it's high and dry. And let's try something here. Let's throw this guy in sport mode. So, And one of the things with a lot of mini drones, or well, drones, any of them, you put them in sport mode, and you get what they call gimbal pitch shift. My friend John Coopy uh, gave me that terminology. Uh, you know, I've heard people call it gimbal flop, but I think it sounds better to call it gimbal pitch shift. And what that is, is the drone pitches forward, it pushes the camera down so that it doesn't look at the top of the drone. DJI is famous for that. Uh, the Femi Mini had a problem with it. It went all over the place. But let's see, look at that. We're clear almost up to 14 meters per second. Let me uh, kind of move sideways here a little bit and, and get a more straight on view of this. And uh, I do know the name of that gulch there that's dry. That's called Turner Gulch. And I've flown up that before. But, uh, in fact, we, are, we don't need to be this high. So let's, let's drop some altitude. There I saw a little movement in the gimbal as we were coming down. I saw it tilt from side to side. So, uh, But I had the stick straight down. Yeah, there's some more. We're definitely getting some jingle, jiggle in the gimbal. I mean, I can even see it on FPV. So I'm going to get us down about 60 meters or so. Plenty high for where we're at right now. And, uh, and let's, go, let's go forward here, and I'm going to drop the gimbal as we go. So one of the things I've seen in the past on this drone is we get a little jiggle, little, I call them micro shakes, and boy look at these guys there, they're, uh, we're not going to fly over the top of them, and yeah I'm seeing that gimbal move around quite a bit, so I'm going to go back into normal mode, and uh, we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, but anyway, they're having to back their boats all the way down there. Uh, let me back up here a little bit so you can kind of see it. Uh, you know where, where where you can see that when the when the uh, when the reservoir is full, they're clear up there at the top. But this time of year, they got to go all the way down there, back them all the way to the bottom. So uh, just kind of an interesting situation. And in the winter. This thing, they'll draw it down to where it's almost empty, and they do that in anticipation of uh, the spring runoff. Okay, we're yawing again to the drone's right, and we're going to come back towards the viewpoint, but I'm going to get you a look at the dam. Let me pick that gimbal up a little bit. We'll get you a look at the dam here and the other facilities here uh, at Lucky Peak Reservoir. And this is managed by the Army Corps of Engineers. I've talked about that in the past as well. Uh, I do have to have a special permit from the Army Corps of Engineers to fly here, uh, which I do. They're really nice people. They, uh, I get an annual permit and I just have to notify them whenever I'm flying here. So, And there we are. That is the, uh, the Vista Point or overlook, whatever you want to call it. Let's go ahead and move back forward. And we'll just, uh, we'll just do an overflight here and uh, 
I see there's some people kind of uh, behind where I'm standing, so we want to be cognizant of where they're at so that we don't fly over the top. Oh, they're getting back in their vehicle, so that's good. So we'll just uh, fly over the top here. And you know what? Let's drop some altitude. We don't need to be this high. So we're going to drop altitude as we uh, come over here. And I'm kind of moving to the side. Let me adjust our heading just a little bit. You can see me standing there uh, right next to my little uh, loner car here. And boy, I hear the drone screaming over the top of us. Let's drop that gimbal as we come over. There we are. Let's pick that gimbal back up and go up the draw here a little ways. The drone is right over the top of me right now. Heading up the draw. 48% battery and we've been flying for uh, 15 minutes or been recording for 15 minutes, actually flying a little bit longer than that. I am just stunned at how low the water is here. It just blows my mind. These are all, again, where you see these trees are all places that, you know, if you've got a boat, when there's actually water high enough, you can pull in and picnic. And oh, look at that down at the bottom there. That That is a little, I don't know if I'd call it a raft or, or what, but but it, it stays out in the middle of that draw. And it's a little dock, and I think you can swim off of it, and you can uh, you can tie your boat off there. I think last time I took a picture of this, it was uh, it was definitely floating. It's high and dry now. Okay, let's uh, let's kind of do a little bit of an arc around here. Drop the camera a little bit and and show you uh, this uh, this other picnic spot that I've shown you before. And you can see the dock there that's just high and dry. Uh, but you know, there's shade trees there, so if you're out boating out here on the reservoir, you just hitch up to one of those docks and you got shade and a place to picnic and so forth. Now this one in particular, of course, you're right next to, uh, uh, to the road there, the highway, but uh, yeah, still kind of a cool feature. And they, they've, they're, they're literally all over the reservoir here. So we'll yaw around here. And let's go full stick forward. and move it back and I got one last little trick that I want to do with this drone before we land we're gonna see if we can do uh, kinda get a good look at the uh, at the uh, vista point here I think it's always cool to see to kinda do a little bit of an arc around it and we could automate that with the Xeno 2 Plus uh, in one of the intelligent flight modes, but I don't think it's ready on this guy yet. Battery level's at 40%, it's telling us. So we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of do a little bit of a manual uh, point of interest flight here kind of a circle around the Vista point. Really easy to do with this drone. I like the controls on this guy. I'm kind of moving it a little bit more forward now to get us in a little closer. And then back to that uh, arc around. This place is just a lot of fun to fly at. I, I just always enjoy uh, flying drones out here, and it's it's kind of convenient, you know. You can see I just pull my car back right up and flop the drones out. You got a nice big piece of pavement to to take off from, and yet it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool to see the footage, uh, pretty dramatic footage. And yeah, we got a carload of folks just leaving here. 
So we kind of got it all to ourselves here again, which uh, is good uh, in that, you know, we know we're not going to bother anybody. So that's kind of one of the things about flying drones. And I know I've talked to a, a number of people. I'm moving the drone out a little ways here so you can get a better look at the Vista Point. Uh, it, it's, you know, you, you always are concerned, or at least I am, I'm always concerned that I don't want to uh, bother anybody when they're someplace like this, you know. I mean, I've had people, you know, tell me they don't like the sound of the drone, etc. So I probably get a little bit too uh, concerned with that sometimes, but uh, I think it's only natural. That's me dropping the gimbal down a little bit, and uh, I was I was kind of moving a little too far out. So, okay, uh, I think uh, we're uh, 20 minutes into the flight. We're down to 32% battery. I'm going to try a uh, automated return to home. That's one of the automated things that this drone will do at this point. And it, let's see how close it gets to the takeoff point here. And I'm sorry about that beep. I wish there was a way to shut that off. If somebody in the chat knows how to do that, let me know. And you can see the drone adjust its vector. I can tell you what I've seen on, uh, on FPV here, as far as video quality, looks pretty good. Now that doesn't really mean a lot until we look at the video off of the memory card, but uh, but I'm just saying so far so good. We did see some wiggles when we were in sport mode over there by the dock, and I've got the gimbal pointed straight down now, so we can see uh, where it comes down. And it's adjusting its, uh, its vector, which isn't exactly where we took off, but it's gonna land, I don't know, it's moving around. We'll we'll cancel it if it gets uh, if it gets too far out of whack here. If it looks like it's going to land someplace that we don't want it to. And uh, you know, every time you uh, get ready to do a landing maneuver, a car pulls up, but he's well on the other side of us. Looks like we're in good shape. So it's going to land pretty darn close to the pad here, and uh, yeah. Looks like, yeah, you might even be able, let me push the, the GoPro down so that you can see that. And it's gonna come down pretty close in front of the, uh, in front of the pad. And I'm gonna let it uh, land with the camera down and let's see if it'll automatically pick the camera up. Uh, DJI drones do that. We're on pavement, so it's not gonna hurt anything. That camera isn't anywhere close to, hitting the ground, but it is interesting. It did not pick it up. It did shut down FPV. So I'm gonna pick up that camera. Uh, but it's interesting. I wish that's uh, that's something, uh, Hubson, if you're watching, set that thing up so that when it lands, it automatically picks up that camera. Okay, uh, let me get everything uh, shut down here and uh, we'll get out the uh, Xeno 2 Plus and we'll kind of run that same pattern with it. Okay, we've got the drone fired up and the controller fired up. Let me uh, go into the app here. And again, it is the X Hubson 2 app. Okay, so it automatically switched to the Xeno 2 Plus, which is awesome. Uh, that's a great deal. And now we're going to go enter device. And of course, typical with uh, Hubson drones, you get that USB cable not connected at first. And then we got ready to fly. Uh, let's see, it's asking for a firmware update, so we might as well, gosh, I don't think, I do not have, I'm going to cancel that because I, I don't have a very good, in fact, I don't think I have a cell signal at all. I'd have to go on the top of the hill to try and get it, so we're going to cancel that. But if we look, uh, everything is uh, ready to go here. It's telling us all the calibrations are good. And you can see the firmware package right there if you're interested. Uh, and we're connected. Uh, you know, this has gone very smooth. I've flown this drone a number of times before. So uh, we'll get out of there. And, uh, you know, we've got ready to fly. Let's go ahead and check that camera menu. And we want to make sure 
uh, white balance we're going to leave on automatic. Color, instead of natural like the little uh, Xeno Mini, this says ordinary. And that's the differences that we have there. You know, we don't have that uh, moire off or whatever that you have on the on the little guy. Uh, but let's go back and uh, yeah, we leave the, the the photo format on JPG. Click on the three dots. Uh, let's. Whoops, sorry about that. I do not want to do that. Let's go in there again. Click on the three dots. Let's format that SD card. And I've always found Hubson drones to be very sensitive to what SD card you use. So it looks like we're good. Let's go back in there. And I want to make sure we are shooting in 4K 30. And I'm trying to remember. Oh, we need to switch to uh, video mode. Sorry about that. Switching to video mode. Let's go back in there again. Uh, yeah, there's our resolution. And we're going to put uh, 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 4K here, and that should be, it should only give us 30 frames per second. Yeah, yeah, and it switched it to 30, yeah. So uh, you cannot, I don't believe you can do 60 frames per second. Oh, you can. Okay, 4K 60. I forgot about that with this drone. So it's got a higher frame rate, so let's use it. We used the best uh, rate that we could on the uh, on the Mini, so we might as well on this one. So, uh, let's see. Nothing else to do here. Uh, video bit rate, it says grade 5, so that's at the very top. Now, what that bit rate is, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, we just had a car pull in with his radio blaring. But uh, anyway, let's. Uh, we might as well go ahead and take off here. Uh, it's funny how you. It's it's a similar app, but there are differences, and it can throw you a little bit. We got 16 satellites. Let's quit messing around. Let's start recording. Yeah, and it's saying that I can't do it in 60. So that's interesting. So it says FPV HD 4K is not supported, but it let me check that box. I, I, I thought this was only 4K 30, so let's go back into that. We're going to go back to 30. That's interesting that it would even let you select that. So let's start recording. Yeah, so I, I th that threw me on that 4K 60, so now we're 4K 30, and my screen just went black. Don't know what's going on there. Well, that's uh, kind of a Hubson deal right there. And it switched to photo mode. Interesting. Okay, let's try that again. We're going to switch to video mode. That had something to do with the camera, no doubt. So I'm going to start recording again. And uh, before we take off, let's make sure that we've we're going to stay. So I don't, it must have been, I don't know. I don't know if changing some of those settings kind of messed it up, but looks like we're good now. So let's go ahead and, uh, and take off. We're going to click take off on the app. And you'll see this guy. Uh, boy, I'm also struck by how much louder it is. And you see it moving around there. It, it moves around a little bit more than that little, uh, than the little mini. Let's, uh, let's turn it around and get it in front of the camera. And I can tell you, uh, I can tell you immediately, it's not as easy to fly. It, it moves around a lot more. And that was traditionally one of the complaints with, uh, with uh, Hubson drones is just that, you know, when you're in close quarters, they can be a little tough. But, uh, yeah, we're doing okay now. Let's jack it back and forth. And you can see that gimbal working like it should. So, uh, it's kind of rising now. Let me drop it down. It's interesting how it moves around. Uh, and, the mini, and the Mini didn't. But, uh, kind of an interesting phenomenon with this guy. Let's pick it up a little and uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, and do our droney right now, so. Sorry guys, I just got thrown there a little bit. Let's, uh, let's uh, drop that camera down a little bit 
and uh, reverse and up now. But it is an in interesting to see the difference between this and the little mini, and that's me adjusting the heading there a little bit. Uh, that this guy, it's definitely more powerful, I can tell you that for a fact, uh, but it also uh, just not nearly as stable as the little, uh, little Xeno Mini. You saw it moving around there in front of the camera. And, uh, you know, it definitely had a little cross coupling. I'm going to move back towards the side of us here and get a look. So you can see where we're standing there on the end of the, uh, and the, end of the Vista point. And uh, let's go ahead and yaw again to the drone's right. And we'll take a look and, uh, and again, we'll go, uh, we'll go up the, uh, up the, the uh, reservoir here a little bit. And we're just in normal mode on this guy too. So this is very similar, although I think I was out a little bit further with the Mini. I think I was out a little over 400 meters, so I'm going sideways right now. And I'm going to pick up the gamble just a little bit. Yeah, that's about where we were with the Mini. And I think we started off at about 60 meters high, so let's get kind of close to that. And then I think ultimately we went up to about 90 or 100 meters. So full stick forward, and let's see how fast this guy goes. Uh, and in normal mode, you can tell this is a much more powerful drone. Uh, we're at uh, about 11.4 meters per second, 11.5. You know, that's about 27 miles an hour or so, roughly. I'm going to pick up the gimbal just slightly here. And, uh, and we'll kind of head out. Uh, I think we went out about... Uh, about 1.2 kilometers with the Mini, so we'll see if we can do that. I'm getting the, uh, make sure I have the controller pointed directly towards the drone. And again, I'm gonna adjust the heading here just slightly. Keep us down the center of the track. And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of, uh, we'll keep that, uh, we'll kind of get you that same view. that we did. Yeah, there's a kilometer right there. And I, as I recall, we had to go out, I think about 1.3 to kind of look up the draw there a little bit. So let's, maybe we can kind of just, let's do a kind of a slow sideways turn here. And so I'm, I'm moving the drone forward and, uh, and sideways at the same time as I'm, as we're, as we're yawing. And I'm going to move a little bit further forward, and we'll continue to go sideways here. There we go. So that's, uh, I, I, you know, I should know the name of that draw there, but I don't. Let's move forward in on it. And like I said, I'm trying to kind of get you a similar view to what we saw with the... Uh, with the little Xeno Mini Pro so that we can compare the video quality. And I had just a little bit of a glitch there on FPV. And I hear an aircraft, so let's get eyes on him. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, folks. We are gonna drop altitude. We're gonna get this baby close to the ground. Yeah, I see him up there. He's way up there. Okay, no worries for us. I just wanted to, uh, until I got eyes on him, I wanted to make sure that I uh, that I was down low. So I was dropping altitude there fast. So we'll pick it back up. He is way the heck up there. It is a helicopter. He is, I'm gonna guess, just guessing, looking at him, he's up there probably 3,000 feet or so. Uh, okay, so uh, let's continue just like we did with the uh, with the mini. And sorry for that quick yaw, but let's go let's go over and take a look at the uh, uh, at at this. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I kind of lost my train of thought at the little picnic area here, and I'm seeing a little bit of jiggle on FPV. 
And as I recall, we were much higher, uh, so I'm gaining a little altitude. We were a lot higher than this when we came over here with the, uh, with the Mini. I think we were around 90 meters high. So that's me dropping the gimbal as we come over the top of it. And well, uh, this guy does not have uh, zoom capability, unfortunately, so we can't zoom in on it, digital zoom, like we did with the uh, with the mini. But we can take a look here, and let me uh, kind of go right over the top, and let's see if we can do a little bit of an arc around here. And I'm going to pull it back as we arc. And you can kind of see the facilities there. Okay, let's get pointed uh, the other direction. And let's, uh, I'll show you the, uh, again, like we did with the Mini. I'm trying to pick up that gimbal at the same time. And I yawed a little bit quick there. Let's uh, let's go full stick forward here, and we're going to get out here a ways, and we'll throw this guy into sport mode and see uh, how much faster it is. So, what's going to be interesting is when we're trying to compare the video footage here, because this drone is so much faster, it'll be kind of tough to keep uh, apples to apples. But we will put them side by side and give you some similar views when we do the uh, conclusion to the video. And, you know, we, we must be hitting a little bit of a headwind. We're about 10 meters per second. And let's kind of arc around here a little bit. And uh, so you can see where the, uh, where the boat ramp is. Looks like we got a boat that just took off there. That's cool. Yeah, he's kind of spinning around there. Okay, just like we did with the uh, with the Mini, let's throw this guy into sport mode and let's see what we can do. So we're in sport mode now and I'm going to go full pitch forward. Yeah, it's telling me we got a little bit of GPS interference and this is kind of typical in this spot because you're kind of down in a little valley here, but we've still got 12, 13 satellites, so we're good. Uh, 13 and a half meters per second. So this is going to be, like I said, I think we're in a little bit of a headwind. It, typically this drone is is a lot faster than that. So, And I'm kind of moving sideways as I'm going forward. So, And we're, uh, we're getting pretty close to uh, our takeoff point here. Okay, let's go. Let's pitch it all the way forward here. So I am full stick forward. There we go. Now we're picking up some speed. 17, eight, almost 18 meters per second. Whoops, sorry about that yaw. Quick yaw in, in sport mode there. This will be kind of an interesting look. Walk, I'm going to slow down as we watch this guy come into the dock. Let's, whoops, man, sorry about that. That was an inadvertent yaw right there, not intended. I'm dropping some altitude. Let's get it down to about 60 meters high here. And we'll turn around and, uh, and come back to us. Well, we're about 50 meters high, that's, that's good enough. And looks like he's getting ready to pick up that boat. They're back in the trailer in there. Or, or is that guy launching? I can't really see that well on the screen here yeah maybe that's he's launching a boat yeah yeah so he's he just launched one so okay let's uh, let's move around to the right again and I'm gonna pick up the gimbal as we do it I'm gonna go back into normal mode and it uh, film mode is what that other mode is and that's super slow but uh, we're gonna go back into normal mode once we get turned around here maybe we'll try that sport mode again with the with a more favorable wind condition and we'll see how fast we can get this guy up to. There again, there's the dam. 
and Vista Point that we're standing on right here. Okay, let me pick that gimbal up and uh, I'm going to go back into sport mode and just for a second here we're going to see how fast this guy can go. So full stick forward, 15 meters, 16 meters per second. There's 17. I've seen 19 meters per second with this guy before, which is pretty quick. So it looks like that's about the best we're going to do. This this will be kind of, whoops, boy, I'll tell you what, the yaws is difficult to adjust when we're in sport mode. So I'm just going to go right over the top of us. Yeah, there's 18 meters per second. That's about 40 miles an hour. There we are. And let's pick that gimbal back up and let's go up the uh, up the draw here a little ways. There she goes, boy! It went flying over the top of us. And we'll kind of do that same loop around here. Okay, I'm going to throw it back into normal mode. In fact, we'll just leave it in film mode here for a second. And uh, let's see what we can uh, let's see if we can get a picture of that similar picture to that dock so you can tell that really throws things slows things down it's at about uh, I don't know two meters per second or so let's go back into normal mode that's slower than we need to go that helps us and that's me dropping the gimbal down and uh, I'm not going to drop it any lower than that and let's see if we can kind of arc around the uh, the picnic area here That gives you a good look. And let's see, we've been in the air about 13 minutes and we're down to 47% battery. So I think you can definitely say that this guy is eating battery. Uh, that was me dropping the gimbal faster than the, uh, faster than the Mini did. So I'm gonna say you're probably gonna get more flight time with the Mini. So there's that dock. We'll get turned around and headed back towards us here. And we'll do another, uh, we'll do another arc around the uh, around the Vista point here so full forward here in uh, normal mode there's the highway to our side to the side of us there So when, it, for it, when I first took off there, I had some folks that were standing there, and you know what, they were just interested, they were watching, but I, it still throws you off. It kind of messes with your concentration when you're, uh, you know, when you hear people talking behind you. Uh, and they, they meant no harm, I'm not, I'm, I'm in, in fact, I'm tickled that people are interested in it, but uh, it definitely, I'm just saying that as a pilot, it tends to, uh, tends to throw my comp, my, uh, concentration off a little bit so let's go ahead and arc around here and you can see me standing there I think we were back a little further so I'm gonna back up here we were definitely back a little further with the uh, with the mini. I'll tell you, yeah, it's telling us we're at 40% battery, so that's pretty good. Like I said, we've been in the air for 15 minutes. And uh, so to get this arc to the drone's uh, left, I'm essentially just pushing both sticks into each other, kind of adjusting the yaw as I go. Let me pick up that gimbal a little bit. Adjusting the yaw as we move around and kind of just doing a big arc. Getting you a look at the, uh, at the Vista point here. So, you know, I talked a little bit about how this drone is not quite as stable as the uh, Mini, the flight controls wise. 
and that is true until you have it in the air like this and then you just don't know the difference I mean if the drone is moving around a little bit uh, yet yeah, you don't know it so the only time that's gonna bother you is like you know when I was uh, right you know trying to hover above the landing pad there and so forth honestly that's the only time that comes into play and you know we're getting that message about uh, GPS interference again and this is an area that uh, that you're gonna see a little of that okay just like the uh, mini let's go into return to home we're down to 34 percent battery and this guy has a uh, has uh, uh, what I was gonna say is this guy has precision landing but you have to turn off the video to do it so as it's coming down we'll turn off video and let's see if we can see if it'll hit the landing pad boy just a beautiful day today I'm picking that gimbal up just a little bit to kind of give you a little bit of a view there the drone the drone adjusted its uh, vector there isn't that beautiful holy guacamole so it'll be fu fun to compare the video with these two drones I can tell you my gut feeling right now from what I know I believe that this uh, Xeno 2 plus is going to come out on top uh, but that doesn't mean that that Xeno Mini won't eventually get there because it's got a great big sensor on it and I'm sure there's some things that they can do to improve it. So I got the camera pointed straight down and you can see it's way off here and we won't let it, uh, we won't let it land there. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll cancel if we have to, but I'm hoping that it'll find. I'm going to stop recording right now because it uses that camera for precision landing. I'm hoping the drone will zero in on us and find that landing pad. And it's moving closer, but it's making me a little nervous because it's right on a piece of sagebrush right now. Yeah, if it doesn't move off here some more. Oh, there it moved off a lot. Look at that. Okay, we might get it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we're quite going to get it. And we didn't get that message about uh, precision landing. Ooh, sorry about dropping the camera there. I moved the camera around and I'm on this selfie stick and it uh, moved it. But I wanted you to see the landing. Now, I'm going to look in. Uh, and again, it did not pick up the uh, camera. So I'm picking that up now, but let's quickly, let's look in uh, settings, and I bet I did not have precision landing on. Uh, waypoint settings. Yeah, so I didn't have that on. So, you know what? We've got enough battery. Let's, let's try that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn that on. We're going to get out of there. We are going to take off again, and... Uh, yeah, what the heck, let's start recording. I'm just gonna hit take off on the app. Oops, sorry about that, didn't mean to do that. Right there, take off on the app. So that was a pretty good landing. Uh, and let me pick up the camera again. And uh, we're gonna go straight up and out in normal mode here. Let me get out there a ways. Yeah, and it's gonna, in seven seconds, it's gonna come back. So I'm going to keep the stick down. Yeah, okay, so it's coming back. Uh, it was down to 25% battery. It says, oh, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> so uh, it's ascending to its return to home height here. And then it'll come back to us. And I noticed the beeping stopped, which is a good thing. Oh, there we got another beep, but I'm still getting the return to home uh, signal or, or in uh, graphic on the on the app. Uh, but yeah, so now the drone's turning around, and uh, yeah, we had that uh, return to home height set pretty high. So let's see if it'll let's see if it'll get a uh, precision landing here. And again, we'll have to stop recording as it comes down. 
So I get the camera pointed straight down. And, you know, it's typical gust of, big gust of wind came up. And again, you know, it's kind of looking at that kind of same spot. Let's see if it corrects itself. Okay, I'm going to start. It's zeroing in. It's about right on top of the Armco there. If it doesn't get any better than that, we'll stop it. Yeah, no, it's, it's doing better. Yeah, searching for apron. And look at, there's the target. Looks like it, it's got it, although typically that target turns green uh, when it gets the uh, apron. So let's see how it does. You know, last time I tried this here, at the very last minute, it moved off and it hit that Armco, but I don't think, uh, I think I've got the thing far enough away that we'll be okay this time. Although it's, it's kind of making me a little nervous. It's moving around a little bit, but the drone's thinking about it. It's coming down. It would have to move a long ways here to hit that Armco. And it sees that landing pad. It wants it bad. It's a little bit to this side of it. Well, okay, I'm going to call that good. We got one leg on the pad, so that's, uh, that's good enough. And uh, yeah, it was wanting it pretty bad. It was moving around quite a bit there. So, okay, let me get everything shut down and we'll do a conclusion. Maybe not a quick conclusion, but we'll do a conclusion. Hey, okay, everybody. The Hubson Xeno 2 Plus and the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro. Side-by-side uh, -side comparison. Uh, you know, obviously you can just look at them and you can see that there's a big difference. I can't remember how much this guy weighs, but let me tell you, it's probably three times heavier than this little guy. It sure feels like it at least. It's a heavy duty drone. And there's something to be said for that, for a powerful drone. Not everybody needs a mini drone. And if you don't, I can absolutely recommend the Xeno uh, 2 Plus. I've been very satisfied with this drone. I had some issues with the original Xeno 2, but the Xeno 2 Plus has been uh, pretty good. You, I've seen a little lens flare with it in the past. Uh, and, you know, we talked about on the flight, you know, how it kind of moves around a little bit. But that's only applicable when you're taking off and landing and close to the ground anywhere. When you're out flying it, you, you don't know that. So I don't see that as a big deal. Uh, and then, of course, the little Xeno Mini Pro 249 gram drone or sub 250 gram class of drone for people that, uh, for instance, if you're in Canada, this is a handy little product. You don't need a license to fly it. In the U.S., you don't have to register it if you're not, if you're just a hobby flyer, if you're not part 107. If you're part 107 like I am, I, I, you, you have to register it anyway. So uh, it really makes little difference to me whether it's under 250 or over 250 because I've got to put a tail number on it no matter what. Uh, that said, <clears throat> flight. You know, uh, I got to tell you, I was pretty impressed with this little guy. It flew great. And you know what? We had no connection itch issues whatsoever. And in fact, uh, the, you know, if we had any issues, we had a little bit of, uh, uh, of modeling a couple of times on FPV with the Xeno 2 Plus. I didn't see any of that with this guy. So, I, you know, I had a lot of connection problems with this early on. Then we had that last firmware update and it seems to have solved it, at least so far. Now, we had it out there uh, about, I think, uh, 1.3 or 1.4 kilometers or so. Uh, you know, we didn't go too terribly far, but uh, we had a good connection, and we're flying around here. Again, this is an environment here at Lucky Peak Reservoir where uh, you GPS isn't so great because it's kind of in a valley and it's blocked by these hills and so forth the satellites can be both drones were fine we got a couple of gps interference warnings with this guy but it didn't affect the drone at all we still had uh, i think 13 was the least i saw maybe 12 so it was still in good shape Not, neither one had issues with addy mode or anything you know dropping out of gps mode uh, so they were just fine uh, so I think, you know, as far as precision flying, I probably found this guy marginally better than the Xeno 2 Plus. Uh, that said, they both fly really well. 
uh, and and had no issues there. Video quality, that's the big thing where we're, that we're looking at here. Now, that's been my big disappointment on this little guy. Uh, it has not, it, it should be better with that 1 over 1.3 sensor. We should be getting phenomenal video off of it. And I've seen shakes in the video. I've seen, uh, uh, it's, it's almost a soft focus, a little bit blurry at times. I mean, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. When I was had it over at the, at the schoolyard next to my house, some of the trees, it almost looked a little smeared. I don't know how else to describe that, the colors on the trees and so forth. Uh, so we'll see at, at higher altitude here if that video looks any better. Now what I do know is the Xeno 2 Plus takes some pretty good video. The only time this guy falls down is if it's looking directly into the sun and, and you get a little bit of lens flare. Other than that, I really love the camera on this one and uh, at least what I've seen in the past. Uh, so uh, you guys will have seen that already and of course right now you're looking at the videos uh, up above my head side by side so you can kind of compare them. Uh, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And most of all, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to look at this video. And I hope you enjoyed this comparison of these two uh, Hubson drones. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the Hubson Xeno 2 Plus and the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro. All right, see you guys later. Bye now.